You don't need to be nearing your twilight years for the term macular degeneration to set your nerves on edge. Sometimes it's the secondhand torment of witnessing an older loved one's vision loss, like a father or grandmother, that instills in one premonition of their own vision failure. And the fear is not entirely unfounded. It's estimated that by 2040, 288 million Americans will have macular degeneration. It's currently the leading cause of vision loss for those 60 years and older. With that said, macular degeneration, alongside other hallmark maladies of aging eyes, like cataracts and glaucoma, can be prevented. And if they're already manifesting, in some cases, they can be curbed, if they're seen too early enough. And most intriguingly, it needn't be by way of drugs or surgical intervention. Simply eye nutrients, optimized diet and lifestyle can resoundingly sustain eye health. And this forms a key dimension to eye doctor Rani Bannock's practice. She combines her extensive neuro-ophthalmological knowledge of the eye and brain with holistic medicine, including nutrition, to prevent and treat eye disease, from its manifesting symptoms to its root cause. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we learn how to get healthy from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Bannock, it's fantastic to have you back on Vital Signs. Thank you so much for inviting me. On this topic of macular degeneration and looking at eye aging, eye damage in general, I know that the sun's UV rays can be a factor in eye damage. Is that specifically implicated in macular degeneration? And in terms of protecting the eyes from this kind of damage, uh, are sunglasses really effective? What, what kind should people be using? Yeah, that's a great question and uh, so important because we all love to be outdoors, but we need to be cautious when we are, um, especially on bright summer days or if we're out on uh, on the water with a lot of glare or out in the snow. The sun emits various wavelengths of light and UV rays are the most common. So there's three types of UV rays. There's UVA, UVB, UVC. Now, um, UVC mostly gets um, filtered out by our atmosphere. So we don't have to worry about UVC, but both UVA and UVB rays can penetrate through the atmosphere and they can get, actually penetrate through the eyes. And so UVB, a lot of it gets filtered out by the cornea and the lens. Some of it, only some of it gets to the retina, but UVA does get into the retina. And these rays are very powerful. Um, they're short wavelength rays and they can cause a lot of oxidative damage and oxidative stress. And so what I, you know, I describe this to my patients as kind of like biological rusting. Um, if the eye is exposed to too many elements, too many factors, for example, photo oxidative stress from these UV rays, then there can be some biological rusting happening. And then that can lead to a cascade of events that can lead to certain ocular issues. So we know that too much UV exposure is associated with burns on the surface of the eye. It can be associated with growths on the surface of the eye, whether they're benign or malignant. Um, UV exposure can be associated with cataracts. And in terms of macular degeneration, you know, what your uh, grandmother unfortunately um, suffered from, um, the jury is really out on that. Initially, it was thought that Yes, um, uh, too much UV exposure is directly linked to macular degeneration, but subsequent large population studies have not necessarily played that out. So I think it's still inconclusive, but it's important to still protect the rest of the eye from UV rays. So we should still be, uh, you know, be cognizant of that. And I always recommend to my patients to wear, especially on bright sunny days between the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., to wear 100% UV blocking sunglasses. And that basically means it's blocking out 100% of UVA and UVB rays. So you have to look for a sticker on the sunglasses that says that. The other um, alternative the sticker may say is UV 400. And that's equivalent. It basically means that those lenses can filter out rays that are 400 nanometers or less. So basically UV rays. The other thing, I, other tip I wanted to provide my, you know, the audience here is that it doesn't matter how expensive the sunglasses are. I mean, you can buy a $10 pair of sunglasses or you can buy a $300 pair of sunglasses. As long as it has the sticker that says 100% UV blocking, it's doing the job. So the price doesn't really pay, play a factor here. It's, it's the nature of the, the tint in the sunglasses. The other things that many people worry about is the effect of, again, with using excessive screen use, that blue light could be posing a damage to their eyes. Is this something that people should be concerned about? Can this lead to macular degeneration? 
Well, the good news is no, <laughs> at least not as far as we know. And the truth is if blue light from our screens really did lead to macular degeneration, we would be having an explosion of macular degeneration. It would be a, a, a pandemic level explosion of macular degeneration because of the, all the time that we all spend on our screen. So retinal cells have natural protective properties against blue light and also UV light. So the good news is there are pigments in these cells that help to absorb and neutralize these potentially harmful wavelengths of light. Now these pigments, they have fancy names. They're called lutein and zeaxanthin and mesozeaxanthin. They're really long, they're hard to remember, but I like to call them, in my mind, they're, they're like vitamins for the eyes. So vitamins L, vitamins Z, and vitamins M, even though officially they're not vitamins, I call them eye vitamins. But these pigments, we can get them from foods and we can get them from nutrients. Our bodies can't make the pigments, so we need to get them externally. When we eat these pigments, when we ingest foods that are high in these pigments, they get selectively deposited into the retina in the back of the eye and then help to protect us against blue light and UV light. So it's amazing how we've evolved in this way, our eyes have evolved in this way, to have natural shields, almost like internal sunglasses and internal blue blockers in our eyes to protect against our lifestyles. The fact that they're called pigments is they have a, a specific color of they do, yes. Yeah. So so these, I, I should expand on that. They're not just pigments. These are nutrients called carotenoids, and they are cousins to like vitamin A, beta carotene, other types of carotenoids in nature. They're over- And I'm aware that you have a book out called uh, Beyond Carrots, yes. Best Foods for Eye Health, A to Z. And I will leave the link to that book in the description for viewers to check out. And I feel like you're taking us into that realm here beyond carrots, beyond what you just get from eating a carrot for eye health. Exactly. Everyone thinks of eye nutrition as eating a few carrots and your eyes will be fine. You'll have 20, 20, but carrots are really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to nutrition. And carrots do have a lot of great nutrients. They have a lot of beta carotene, which is important for eye health. Um, beta carotene gets converted into vitamin A, which is important to protect against night blindness and also dry eye. But these specific nutrients, again, these cousins to beta carotene, they're called the macular carotenoids because again, they get selectively deposited into the macula in the back of the eye. And I'll actually, I'll pull out my eye model here um, to give a short demonstration. So you can see that the eye, when we look at someone's eye, we basically just see the very front part. We see the white of the eye, we see the cornea and then the iris, which is the colored part. But if I open this up here, you'll see that there is a lot, there are many other structures inside of the eye that make up the eye. So what we're seeing in the very front is just kind of the very surface. There's a lot happening here. And I'll just show you, point out a few important structures here. So the very surface here, the curved clear surface, this is the cornea, it's dome shaped. And this is what gets dried out in dry eye, the cornea. Behind that is the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. Uh, whether you have brown eyes or blue eyes or green eyes or hazel eyes, this is because of the iris pigment. Next, we have the lens, which is a curved structure that sits behind the iris and helps to, ch it changes shape to help us focus. So it's dynamic. Um, it can help us focus at distance or intermediate distances or up close. It's constantly changing shape, the natural lens. Behind that, is a gel-like structure, which I removed, but this is the gel-like structure that sits here to help keep the shape of the eye. This is the vitreous. And then in the very back of the eye, what's represented here in orange is the retina. And this is the light sensing tissue in the back of the eye. These are the blood vessels that supply the retina. This yellow spot here, I don't know if the color's coming out on the, on the camera, but this is where the macular carotenoids are deposited. And this is called the macula lutea. And lutea means yellow, it comes from lutein. So the reason why this spot in the back of the eye is yellow is because of these, this concentration of these pigments that come from our foods, the macular carotenoids that get deposited right here. So the light comes in through the front of the eye, it gets directed towards here. This is actually, this spot right here in the macula is responsible for our highest resolution vision. So our 2020 vision is responsible, the, the macula is responsible for our 2020 vision.